from a place we're not allowed to reveal. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Yes. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is. Not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. You may have heard recently we did a show about uh, this Fox TV show called Moment of Truth. We talked about a uh, an alleged contestant. And I say alleged because I am not convinced this is even real. In fact, I have reason to believe that it may not be real. It's my opinion. Anytime I see a contestant on a TV show like this and you look them up on the Internet and you find out they've got acting and modeling resumes on there, leads me to believe that uh, this is a TV show that's hiring out-of-work actors to play a part that is scripted. And Fox has done this with reality shows before, and we've told you about it. So I'm not even convinced this is real, but that's not even important in the context of what I'm about to do. For those of you who didn't hear it, a contestant, I call her an alleged contestant on Moment of Truth, uh, was being asked a variety of very personal questions, and she was hooked up to a lie detector. And the way the game works, it was originated in Colombia. Fox licensed the idea to use in the United States. Is that the questions get intensely more personal as the amounts of money at stake go up. The more questions you answer truthfully, the more money you allegedly make. <laughs> if that's a real lie detector, is anybody checking? Does anybody care anymore? Uh, ultimately, you could win some large amount of money, supposedly. And uh, this woman was sitting on a stage. Her husband was there. And so was her ex-boyfriend, and for those of you who didn't see it or hear us talk about it, this is what it sounded like. Here's another question that your ex-boyfriend, Frank, will ask. <laughs> so, I've given Frank an alternate question. It replaces the one that Monica stopped. If you are truthful, it'll be worth $100,000, and I hope, Warren... That that is a, a gamble that's worth it for you. So, ex-boyfriend Frank, once again, question 15. <clears throat> Do you believe I'm the man you should be married to? Um, I'm going to be honest and say yes. That answer is... True. I'm not sure what to say. You've answered 15 questions truthfully. You've won $100,000. Uh, first of all, Frank, is there anything you want to say at this point? 
Yeah, there's, there's really nothing else I can really hear, so might as well just go for it. Have you guys talked about this ex-boyfriend at all? Yeah, earlier on in our marriage, but I mean, I don't know he was still an issue. I mean, with an answer like that, I can only uh, assume that you're, you're not happy. Are you unhappy? Sometimes. Sometimes. Now, a New York newspaper says these two are now separated. Again, I'd like to see proof these two are not actors. I'd like to see proof they were ever married. And I'd like to see proof that they were not, se if they were married, they were not separated before they did the show together as out of work actors. I know she clearly has a resume online advertising her acting and modeling services. So I'm not so sure I believe any of this. But all that aside, we don't know what the truth is, despite the name of the show. But here's what I do know. There are people like this. Whether they would go on national television and admit to being people like this, that's a whole other question. But what would they do anonymously on a radio program? Well, we know, sitting here, that's a different story. You don't have to be an actor to call this show. We don't have the budget to hire actors to work on this show. There are people out there right now who are married. But they believe they should be married to somebody else. They should be with the ex-boyfriend, the ex-girlfriend, the high school sweetheart. The guy who became a millionaire, the guy who became the rock star. The woman who became the Playboy model, Playboy centerfold. And since you're anonymous, since nobody will know for sure if it's you, that's who I would like to have call in during this hour. If you are married, but you think you should be married to someone else. You wish you were married to someone else. You still think about being married to somebody else. If you think you should be with somebody other than the person you're married to, a specific person, I don't need their name. In fact, I don't want their last name for sure. Because I don't even have your last name, so it doesn't even relevant. But if you are married to somebody today, but you think you should be with somebody else, ex-girlfriend, ex-boyfriend, maybe ex-husband, ex-wife, it could be any number of scenarios. But every day you go to bed with the wrong person, every day you wake up with the wrong person, Every Thanksgiving, every Christmas, every New Year's Eve, every Memorial Day, 4th of July, and Labor Day, every Valentine's Day, you're with one person, but you know in your heart you should be with a specific other person. I want to hear from you right now. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. Better to have chicks who live a little bit of distance from you, don't have time to see you. She's got three more years to finish her PhD. So. Then you seem, by the way, you seem so accommodating. Honey, you've got that PhD to study for. You take all the time you need working on that. I understand. And when you've got all that free time, you bang on the chicks. That's what you do. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. By 1 800 5 800 Tom. I want to talk to you if you think that while you are married to one person, you should be married to another. And on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, Tom, how's it going? Great. So, yeah, I watched that show and it was it was unbelievable. I felt the exact same way that she did. I answered all those questions the same way. Wait a minute. You answer, you, so you were watching and playing along? Yeah, with my husband. With your husband there? Yeah, no, I didn't tell him, but, but I just, it, it hit really close to home. It really... I didn't realize, I guess, that I felt 
that strongly. Did your husband look over you and say, honey, you don't feel like that, do you? <laughs> yeah, he actually did, because he knows who it is. And then you lied. Yeah, I did. Right. So uh, who is this that you should be with? Um, he was my boyfriend in high school, and he went off to the Army and got some chick pregnant and married her instead of me. I see. Now, why would you want to be married to a manifestly irresponsible individual like that? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I guess there was something between us that I well, don't have with my husband now. Well, there's also something between him and somebody else. <laughs> yeah. And he's a manifestly irresponsible individual. Yeah. Right? Yes, no, that's very true. But you still know. want to be with him. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Even though he's irresponsible. Well, yeah. I don't know. I, he just, he was a, a better guy than my husband is. I mean, even though he went and, and did that, I don't know. So why were you in such a rush to get married? Um, my husband said that he would uh, put me through school. That's so, why? Yeah, yeah, I needed I needed to focus on my studies and he was willing to to facilitate that. So it's all about money. Yeah. So is your plan to go to school and then get out? Um it was, but I I don't think I can do that. I I think I'm going to get a divorce. Actually, no. Yeah, I know I'm going to get a divorce now. That's what I just said. When I say get out, I mean you wait until you get your degree. No, I'm not going to wait until I get my degree. So you're going to get a divorce now? Yes. Yeah. I, I realize that this isn't fair. When did you realize that? <laughs> when I was watching the show, actually. It kind of, I saw the guy's reaction. I was like, this isn't cool. Holy cow. So, I mean, even if I never get back with the other guy, it's not fair to who I'm with now. So. It did, did he have any idea that he made you that offer and that's what pushed you over the edge? Um, I, I think to an extent he does. But probably not. I, I, don't, I don't think he knows that that was all that I was looking for. I don't even know why you needed to be married. You're, you're only 24. You got married at 22. Mm -hmm. And you were trying to become one of those military wives. Is that what it is? Oh, no, no. I I don't know. That, well, your ex is in the military. I know, and that that isn't something that, that I necessarily wanted. I don't know. It just, and maybe it's the, just the idea of him that I can't get over. Not necessarily him, but it, it's definitely... What idea is that? We had a great time together, and I don't know. There's... There was just something... Yeah, but you, what were you, 20, 19, 18 years old? Uh, yeah. Well, what did you know back then? Nothing. In fact, what do you know now? In fact, what do you know now? <laughs> no, I, I just know that this isn't right, so... So when are you going to tell him? Um, I'm going to tell him that I want a divorce. When? Oh, I don't know. Soon, probably, this weekend. Why don't we do it right now? No. I can't do it right now. Why not? Because I think that would be cruel. I I would like to talk to him, not on the radio. I'll be here with you to support you. <laughs> I have a feeling you'd support him more than me. But... I uh, put it this way. Uh, I don't think I would actually favor one over the other. I mean, at least you're doing the right thing now and not waiting until he's paid for your whole education. Yeah. Now, you know you should pay him back every penny he spent on you. I'll certainly try. How hard can it be? Well, I mean, I have to get a career first. I'm... What kind of de uh, what kind of degree are you studying for? Um, it's in the medical field. Nurse. Yeah. <laughs> you're trying to lead me to believe you're studying to be a doctor. No, 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 no. I'm... Something in the medical field. Well, that's no. like the guys who say they work in retail, and yeah. I ask them if, if if they want paper or plastic, you know. No, no, I'm just trying to keep a little bit more anonymity, I guess. Uh-huh. There's a lot of nurses out there, dear. Don't worry about it. <laughs> That's true. All right. 
So you're going to tell him this weekend that you want a divorce? Yeah. Go stay with somebody. I don't know. But you're not going to go try to reach the other guy and try to compound the mistake, are you? No, he's he's married. He lives out of the state, so I I don't want anything to do with him. But and you do realize that this is all a matter of being immature. That it that that guy is really not the guy for you or a guy for you. Yes. Yeah, I do. I absolutely do. That you shouldn't I, have married anybody. No, no, I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have, and I shouldn't be married now. And neither should he. So. And besides all of that, from his perspective, how is this marriage going, do you think? How is it going? From his perspective. Um, well, you know, I'm, I'm not really faithful, so I, I, and he knows that, so I, I don't know. I can't imagine that, that he's very happy. I don't know why he sticks around either, honestly. But but does he act like he's happy, or are you just uh, projecting? No, no. I mean, we we fight constantly, and I don't know. He, I don't, I don't think he's happy at all. What do you fight about? Um, everything from what channel to watch to money to I don't know everything. And how long did you date this guy before you married him? Four years. Four years. Mm-hmm. All that while wishing you were with the other guy. Yeah. Yep. He would send me emails every once in a while from various, you know, military places and, and I don't know, kind of kept the fire burning, I guess. And how long were you with that guy? Um, for about a year. But we were best friends since, you know, junior high school. <laughs> if you were such good friends, why did he knock someone else up? I don't know. Well, that's a question you're going to have to answer. You know, I, like I said, I think it was really more more the idea of him and being with somebody else rather than, than my husband. But before you married your husband, you felt this way. Yeah, but but I think it, I, I projected it onto that guy and kind of put him up on, on a pedestal that he shouldn't have been on. But, you know... Instead of instead of really being in love with him, it was just I I wanted somebody to come in and take me you out. You wanted what you couldn't have. That's true too. I'm sure. All signs of immaturity, dear. Yes, I know. I'm not proud of it. I. My fear is that you would then compound the problem by trying to get back with the other guy. No, I can't. I can't. He's married and, and doing his own thing. Um. I, I don't want him. I just <clears throat> want out of my relationship. Can we talk to you next week and see if you actually did it? Yes. Hold on. I'm going to have Dean get your information. one oh, 800 800 tom is our telephone number. This is Jason on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Jason. How you doing today? I'm doing okay. Uh, to answer your question, you asked before if uh, these things were fake or not. These these uh, these uh, game shows, games slash reality shows, yeah. Satisfy your curiosity. Uh, I've been a casting director for eight years for several different programs. And thanks to your screener, you told me not to mention the entities I work for, but I will tell you they are all 100% fake and scripted. Every single one of them from the court shows, to the dating shows, you name it, they're all scripted. The Survivor, Big Brother, every one of them. Uh, I'm not the least bit surprised, although I'm sure a lot of the viewers would be surprised. Let me uh, let me ask you this, Jason, because I, you know, even though I'm around the television business and the film business, the radio business is my primary business. I've been on television, but it's something I do sometimes. Uh, with a lot of these shows. I go back to the Fox show, Who's Your Daddy, as an example. Uh, the show about a woman who, uh, I guess, agreed to, uh, I guess she'd been put up for adoption or something. And they, 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 they found her real father, and they put a lineup of, like, I don't know what it was, six guys. Huh? And she got to interview all of them and try to figure out which one was her father. Right. And I we later found out this woman was, like, an out-of-work actress. 
and a model, and she's been on other reality shows. Uh, I always smell a rat. Whenever they give out the name of the contestant on the air or the name of the person on the reality show, I immediately Google them to see if they've got an acting resume or a, a modeling resume. That, that's really the way to sniff these out, don't you think? Well, absolutely, and I can tell you that over the last eight years, I've gotten about 80% of the people that I've casted out of clubs and bars. <laughs> so you go in on, like, Friday night and you hand out your business card? Absolutely. You, uh, you say we're putting on a new show. reality show and we're looking for people just like you and you look for like attractive people. That's correct. We also do sporting events at the beach, Manhattan Beach, Long Beach, um, pretty much any big social gathering where there's a lot of drinking and a lot of pretty young faces. And uh, while we're on this subject, uh, uh, something else has become apparent to me over the last few years, and it, it seems to be within the past four or five years and not before that. It seems to me that any TV show where bands are performing, which would include the Grammy Awards, The Tonight Show, Jimmy Kimmel, or the Super Bowl, uh, it appears to me that they hire out-of-work extras or actors or something to populate the first 12 or so rows. Yeah, no question. I'll tell you, one of the best places to get people for these uh, <laughs> ridiculous shows that uh, fortunately have made me good money over the years, but uh, you stand outside local clubs that have up-and-coming bands by the back door where the groupies are hanging out, you tell them you're in casting and you're going to put them on TV, done. Five minutes, you'll have ten faces that will show up in a week interviewed on TV. So when I watch a game show and something outrageous happens that makes news and then you go to the Internet and you check that person's name and you find out they've got an acting resume, mm -hmm. odds are, in your opinion, that person auditioned for the part like any other acting role and they know the script going in and they are hired for the gig. Would you say that's uh, accurate? That's definitely a fact. The only thing I can't speak to in terms of the game show is that, I, you know, the game show itself is real, but in terms of these other reality shows, dating shows, things of that nature, they're all completely scripted. So do you think this Moment of Truth show is real? Oh, the, the, totally scripted. 100%. But isn't it a game show? It is a game show, but that one is a little different because it's game show slash dating. Yeah. For lack, for, lack, for lack of a better term, yeah, I, I really can't uh, tell you, but again, that, that thing's 100% scripted. I only ask this because there was a movie called Quiz Show a few years ago with, with John Turturro, directed by Robert Redford. It was about the quiz show scandals of the 1950s. The TV networks had a problem where they had contestants on who were briefed, who were given the right answers to very difficult questions. That's correct, and I think after that they were put under the microscope and had to tighten it up. And that was my understanding that game shows have this federal regulation, that people are looking at them uh, to see what exactly is going on. And that's what I was trying to say. The, the game shows, again, are real. The other reality shows are not real. But that's even why, the, even, but that's what I'm saying. Sport. When you've got a show where people are being paid cash money for telling the truth, is, it, is that not considered a game show? Is that what it is? Uh, sure. But I can tell you in all the court TV shows where you see, you know, your Judge Judy, your Judge Mathis, all scripted. Every every bit of it. That Both sides are being paid before they even get in there. So it's irrelevant who wins. Well, uh, that's been known about the People's Court for years, uh, going back to its original incarnation with Judge Wapner. They had a uh, uh, disclaimer in the credits that said that both sides are being compensated. And they dismissed uh, their claims against each other and what have you. So uh, that's not a secret, and that's okay. But you see, back in the early days of a show like the People's Court, back in the quaint era when that show was on, like the 80s, um, I think back then the, 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 the shows were real. The people had real complaints. It was kind of like a small claims court, and people argued their case on TV. I now believe a lot of these shows are just completely goosed or completely fiction. Well, what they'll do is they'll find two friends who have a legitimate beef but aren't really interested in suing each other. So they go in, they make one guy the good guy, one guy the bad guy, 
change the story up a little bit for some high drama on TV, and there you have it. Yeah. That's exactly right. Fascinating. All right. Now, again, we don't know which ones of these shows are fake and which ones are real, but I'll say this. I don't believe Moment of Truth is real. I don't. And I'm entitled to my opinion. Is that true, Gary? The creator of the show is listening right now. Well, the creator of the show is not listening. Isn't the creator in Columbia? The uh, executive producer of the show is listening. Or maybe he's the guy who adapted it for Fox or whatever. I don't know. He's, he's listening and would like to go on the air? Sure, put him on the air. All right. We'll get him on the air coming up. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. When you go to a bar or something or a dance club and people leave their beers on the side and a girl asks you to buy her a beer, just grab that beer and take it to her. Don't let her see you, though. And then if she asks you, hey, this beer's half drank, I'll be like, well, I took a sip. I'm buying it for you. Don't be so stingy. And she'll drink it anyway. And there's a free <laughs> beer, baby. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show from Hollywood at one 800 500 By the way, I wonder if Perez Hilton saw Fidel Castro announcing he was stepping down as president of Cuba. Why won't Perez Hilton come out and just say... I'm an amateur with a blog website. I'm not a professional. I don't know what I'm doing. Just Perez, say it. Yes, he's got unimpeachable sources. Give me a break. Perez Hilton said Fidel Castro was dead. He had the world exclusive. And then the Fudge report, that Matt Fudge, he repeated everything Perez Hilton said. He, like, quoted it on his website, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, no such thing as a retraction anymore. <laughs> in fact, Perez for weeks was saying, oh, it's true. Trust me. I know. You haven't seen him in a long time. Believe me. Fidel is dead. I know. They had, they had like uh, Miami bracing for riots and stuff because of that guy. Good work, Perez. That's where I get my news. PerezHilton.com. Jesus. And remember, new clothes sold separately. <laughs> All right, uh, we have uh, Howard Schultz on the phone, and in addition to being the CEO of Starbucks, he is the executive producer of Moment of Truth for Fox. Hello. How are you, Tom? I'm okay. Now, you sent an email to uh, my staff here saying that you'd like to come on and talk uh, with me about your show. Well, I just want to stand up for the show. Would you like to do it uh, attached to a lie detector? I'd be happy to. Really? Yeah. We'll set that up. Feel free. Okay, Gary, I'm serious. Let's get that up. Uh, and uh, we'll have Howard come down here, and he'll answer the same questions uh, attached to a lie detector. All right, Howard, uh, so stand up for your show. Well, first of all, it isn't a scam. Everything that people see is real. Uh, the questions that the people ask, uh, are asked during the polygraph test, we select 21 of them for the show. Uh, we research their backgrounds. We put together those questions. Where do you find those people? Through normal casting. I mean, I have a casting uh, company that we uh, use to find people. Um, the woman that you're referring to in the show, she was from New York. She was originally found by a, a New York casting company that does a lot of re reality casting in New York. So uh, the bottom line, though, is that are you a reality show or a game show? Are you regulated by the federal regulations that regulate game shows? Yeah, I mean, we are we are a game, uh, but, you know, in a way, we're not a game. We're a reality show. But I guess for all intents and purposes, it's a game. Well, if I turn on the TV and I see $1,000, $10,000, $100,000, that looks to me like a game show. And, it, and for that purpose, it is a game, absolutely. And so you have to abide by the federal regulations as uh, regarding uh, tipping people off to answers in advance and uh, that uh, the results have to be real. Absolutely. And so you would swear that uh, this person was not some out-of-work actress following a script 
Well, she was an out-of-work actress because I've seen her resume online, and you just said that you found it through the usual cats. You know, be, people think that the, the contestants on game shows like Jeopardy, somebody sent a postcard in, and then they went down to the Jeopardy office in Culver City, and they took a test, and then they had the highest scores of the test, and then they went on Jeopardy. But you're saying that the contestants, at least for your show, you have casting agents out looking for contestants. We have people that go out and meet people in uh, typical form of all reality shows find people and then in this particular case i did the callback interview for lauren cleary now i ask you this question because uh we have been told by uh members of the writers guild who don't work on reality shows uh people who uh, work on reality shows who say they are writers but they're not allowed to be members of the guild and also people who say they worked on reality shows and what we hear time and time again from people is that these shows are not reality at all uh, that uh, they have a loose, if not a script, kind of like a loose uh, outline or guideline as to where the shows are going to go and how they're going to end up. Uh, we've gotten more than a couple of calls like this. Are you going to tell me all these people were lying? No, I'm saying that this, for the purposes that you're laying out, this is a game show, and a game show as such, it's not subject to the very things you're talking about that other reality shows might do. All right. So the so everything that was said on your show was true, and the lie detector is a real lie detector. One hundred percent, absolutely accurate. And there is somebody monitoring this. We do not make the decisions as to whether or not the person's telling the truth or not. We use a, a certified polygraph examiner who determines, in his sole judgment, whether or not he believes the person is being deceptive in their answer. We have never, ever questioned anything he's ever said. If he says they're being deceptive, for our purposes, they're being deceptive. If he says they're telling the truth, then we go with the truth that he lays out for us. And if he says that the third category is uh, inconclusive, and any question that is inconclusive, we do not use. Do you pre-interview the contestants and ask them the questions in advance or tell them the areas you're going? No. What happens is is that the questions that the woman answered on the show that you saw Monday night, she had already been asked those very same questions amongst others. We polygraph the person for about, uh, it takes about an hour and a half, two hours. We polygraph the person using about 50 to 60 questions. Within those 50 to 60 questions are the 21 questions that we end up using for the show. Were one of the questions, what is the name of your ex-boyfriend? No, because we only ask yes or no questions. So how did you find the ex-boyfriend? Uh, in that particular case, just probably by research. She might have even given it to us, for all I know. The, I Why would she do that? Because they give us a lot of information on the, on the really? application form. If I applied to be on a TV show, I would not tell you the names of my ex-wives or who I had sex with five years ago. How did that just happen to come up? Because we, on the application form, there are, there's a question that says, give us the name of three of your friends, give us the names of your closest relatives and the phone numbers. And what we, what our producers do is they call those people and call people that those people recommend so we reach as deep into people's lives as we possibly can get. Let's throw another one at you here. Uh, sure, the contestant is uh, on a lie detector, uh, but the husband isn't. How do we know these two people haven't already had this conversation? How do we know? They very well might have. We don't know. And, and, and you know, in some cases, our experience has been, yeah, the, the husband and the wife may end up having a conversation prior to the show. If somebody can remember off the top of their head the 50 or 60 questions that we asked them during the polygraph, more power to them. Whether or not they discuss it before the show, I do not know. All I'm saying is, is that what you saw, to the best of my knowledge, is absolutely accurate, 100%. Had she had a conversation with her husband? I don't know. You'd have to ask her. So it is possible that this was not some big revelation. Either that the question would be asked, or that the husband would be finding this information out for the first... There's no big revelation. Right. It, it, it's possible it could be no revelation. It's possible. I don't know, but it's possible. Absolutely. You don't know. All right. I, I'm going to take you... Is, I don't care. 
<laughs> well, I, well, I'm sure as the creator of the, by the way, you're not the creator of the show, are you? Yes, I am. Well, I thought the show was from Columbia. No, you're misinformed. I, it's, it's something that I'm trying to get everybody to understand. Why are people saying it's a show from Columbia? Because the very first country that put the show on the air was Columbia. So you created it and it first went on in Columbia? Correct. Wow. I went down there to set up the show in Columbia. They were in a hurry to get it on the air there. They put it on the air. And the show went through the roof in the ratings. And for the record, you don't run Starbucks. Uh, I do not. I wish I did. <laughs> All right. Now, we're going to take you up on your offer. Uh, my word is my bond. And we're going to hook you up with a polygraph here in the studio at a mutually convenient time. Are, are you game? And to do what with it? To ask you the same questions I just asked you. The exact same questions you just the asked? The exact same. So you, now you've been pre-interviewed. So when you come in, you no surprises. I will ask you the exact same questions. Absolutely, be in happy order to answer those exact same questions. I will ask them. All right, we we we, uh, we know where you are. We will hook that up uh, within a few days or a week's time. You come in, uh, we'll uh, hook you up, and uh, if nothing else, you answer all the questions and uh, get uh, all truthful, and uh, you get a big plug for your show. And just for the record, I will answer those exact questions. So hopefully there's a transcript of this show. Oh, so in other words, maybe I forgot to ask the right question. No, Is that what I'm you're saying? saying? I'm saying just so you don't pull a fast one. How could I do that? I don't know. I have nothing to hide. Well, why would you? What if I threw in a, a, a joker into the deck? Would, 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 you, would you be worried about that? Uh, no. I won't ask about, I'll put it this way. I promise not to ask any personal questions about you, your family life, your any of that. Nothing. Okay. Okay. I mean, I, what I've agreed to is I will answer the questions that you've asked me on this radio program. I will answer those questions under a polygraph if you wish. Okay. That's how certain I am of the answers I've given you. To those questions. Absolutely. But there may be other questions that I just forgot well, I mean, to ask. Look, at, there's a variety of questions. There's a variety of questions I could ask you under a polygraph that you wouldn't want to answer. Well, there's no doubt about it, but I'm not making any claims. I, for example, I don't claim that everything I say on this show is true. No, I understand. In fact, that's I've been open. I, just... I openly lie about stuff all the time. That's right. I am not lying with regard to what I answered you on these questions on this you, show. You're starting today. to sound like Bill Clinton, Howard. You really are, but uh, that's okay. I, oh, I, I don't know if I should take that as a compliment or not. <laughs> All right, we're going to hook that up. We're going to hook you up. Fair enough. You, people talk about hooking you up, but I'm really going to hook you up. That's fine. Okay. I've got nothing to hide. Sounds good to me. That's Howard Schultz. He is indeed the creator and the executive producer of The Moment of Truth on Fox. And we're going to bring him in. We're going to hook up to a polygraph and ask him those questions. As soon as Dean transcribes all those questions. To a piece of paper. Okay. Tell Dean what transcribe means, would you? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Angela on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hello, Tom. Yes. I think you're an idiot. You do? Yes. Really? What is your IQ, darling? Uh, uh, you are ugly. You are fat. What does that have to do with doing a radio show? Well, you are giving bad advices to these young uh, boys. I'll bet you're unshaven. Poisoning, poisoning their minds. How so? I mean, what the hell? You know, why should a woman sleep with a man with a $10 dinner? Oh, why? so I, uh, I understand right. that you're a high-priced hooker, darling, and that it costs no, a lot I more to get you into the sack. Hooker. How much does it cost? All... I just want to know what the price is. How much oh. would it cost to get you into the sack? It's going to cost a lot of money. To How much? You. Well, it's going to be at least six months. So you figure you're you're you have a high IQ. You figure mm. after six months and dating and and then once we get there, you're a dead fish in the sack, and you really have no interest in having sex. It's just the price you'll pay no, to have a boyfriend. No, no, no. you guys, you guys. How are you in the sack? You are you good in bed? Are you worth you six have... months? Listen. Are you I'm worth six talking. months of dating? No, I'm talking. I'm talking. No, you're not going to tell me how to do the. I, I'm didn't fine. It's the Tom Likas show. You called, and you will follow. No, no. You will I, follow you, Tom Likas' rules. You understand? Talk. Now, what I want to know from you is, are you that good in the sack that you're worth waiting six months for? Yes. You are. Yes. How many men have you slept with? A lot. How many? Uh, a lot. How many? I, Ten? Twenty? You don't need to. Know how that. many? You don't need to know. Yes, that. I do. No, you don't. I, you know what? You are, you are lousy in the sack, and I know it. The Tom Likas Show. 97.13 FM. SoCal's FM Talk Station.